Hi, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're going to talk about solid state drives for your Dell PowerEdge R930 server. Let's get going. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by today to learn a little bit more about the Dell PowerEdge R930 server. Do us a favor, if you find anything that helps you in this video, click that like and smash that subscribe. All right, we'll top in. Uh, this video is specifically focused on the R930 and specifically focused on solid state drives. All right, so here's what we're going to do in this video as a whole. We are going to go over the compatible types of drives for the R930 server. We're going to go over the max speeds, the max sizes. We're going to physically install one, which is incredibly easy because it's a hot swap drive, but we're going to do it nonetheless just to show you how easy it is. We're going to show you two tools that we're a big fan of, Dell Diagnostics and HD Sentinel. These will be great great testing tools just to make sure you have good drives. And the reason we like HD Sentinel, um, you can plug in a storage array and test your drive standalone before you ever put them into a live production environment. And HD Sentinel will tell you the health score, the power on hours. And again, it's just a great secondary tool. And there's plenty of tools out there. I would love to hear the tools that you that are your favorite tools at home. Uh, drop a comment down below. Uh, it's always just fun to hear what everybody's using. So, all right, we'll top into the compatible types. Well, you have SAS solid state drives and you have SATA solid state drives. With SAS, you can max out at 12 gigabit per second, whereas with SATA, you can max out at 6 gigabit per second. So that is the distinct advantage of SAS over SATA is the speed. On the flip side, SATA will cost less, which is its, its distinct advantage, is it's just going to be cheaper compared to a uh, SAS drive. So if you want the speed, you're going to have to pay for it. So we always tell people when you're sitting here and you're choosing, hey, which drive do I want to upgrade with? You know, I just want to get rid of hard drives and I want to get to solid state drives, but I'm not really sure which one I want. Well, it really depends on your application. Do you need the 12 gigabit? Because if you do, then I recommend the SAS, but you're going to have to pay a little bit extra. And if, if uh, budget is your main concern and you're not really worried about speed, go SATA. So that's uh, how I always tell people kind of how to choose between the two of them, right? All right, now on the uh, max sizes between SAS and SATA, they're going to be the exact same. You can get 7.68 terabytes per drive slot, which when you think about it is actually a pretty great storage overall because the max hard drive that you can put into uh, your R930 server is going to be 2.4 terabytes on the SAS side and 2 terabytes on the SATA side. So you actually can get 7.68 terabytes with solid state drive. So not only will the solid state drive be a better performing drive, a faster drive, it's going to also uh, give you higher scalability and better storage overall. So there's a, you know some distinct advantages of solid state drives over hard drives. And one of the things we always recommend to people, they're, you know, they call us and they say, hey, we really don't want to get rid of our R930 yet. You know, it's a great beast of a machine. Uh, we want to you know, extend the life a couple more years. What do you recommend? We always tell them two things to, to extend the life upgrade your RAM and upgrade to SSDs over, uh, over hard drives. That is going to be a great band-aid to just give you a little bit more life out of your R930 before you have to go drop, you know, $10,000, $20,000 for a brand new server, which I don't recommend doing that in the first place. But if that's what you do, uh, we can sell you used servers for much, much cheaper, but we also sell new servers too. Uh, but so it depends on what you need at your data center, right? So, all right, well, now that we know a little bit more about the uh, the max speeds, the max sizes, uh, let's show you how to physically install one, and then we'll show you those two tools that we like. All right, have my ESD gear on. We're safe to work on our R930. So what we're going to do is we're going to remove our old drive, and then we're going to install a new solid state drive. And I got to say, I love the R930. This is a beast of a machine. You got 24 bays in front. You can put a ton of SSDs in here and get a ton of performance out of this machine. Uh, love it as a whole if you're using this at home. So, all right, go ahead and push your red circle. You're going to pop out the tray for your old hard drive, and we are going to install a 3.84 TB and it's just going to click right into place again and I'll do it uh, one more time it's a very simple install when you slide it in you'll see the tray is going to catch right there and you just clip it into place it'll be one of the easiest installs that you can do for your R930 and what I always tell people is if you want to uh, extend the life and upgrade the performance for your server as a whole uh, upgrade your RAM upgrade your SSDs that's going to be the best things you can do and we can definitely help you with that so now what we're going to show you how to do is test your R930 with Dell Diagnostics Hey guys, it's Ben with Cloud Ninjas, and today I'm going to be showing you how to test your hard drives with Dell Diagnostics. And technically, it's going to cover more than just hard drives. It'll test your whole system and other components such as your CPUs, your memory, your NIC, the fans, video cards, and much, much more. But like I said, you can also test your hard drives with this, and it's actually a pretty good way to test them, um, and it's a great way to see if there's issues with those drives. So let's go ahead and get started. So what you want to go ahead and do is boot up your server 
And during post, you want to go ahead and press F10 so you can enter the lifecycle controller. Once you're in the lifecycle controller, you want to navigate to the hardware diagnostics tab on the left side, and then you want to press run hardware diagnostics. And you may get a little warning screen, but you just want to go ahead and press yes. And it'll take a little bit of a second to load, but this will load us into Dell Diagnostics. So immediately, whenever we load into Dell Diagnostics, there's a lot of information that pops up. As you can see on the left-hand side of the screen, it shows everything that's going to be tested. On the right-hand side of the screen, there's lots of information about the test itself. Um, you can also navigate to the results and different configurations and also the event log. One thing I do want to mention about Di Dell Diagnostics is that some of you out there, when trying to run the hardware diagnostics, you may get an issue. Or you may get a warning about the firmware not being supported or the onboard diagnostics not being supported. And in that case, you want to go ahead and you can either do this in Lifecycle Controller itself or you can do it in iDRAC. But you just want to go ahead and update that firmware. And we actually have a video later on in the series that covers mass updates. And one of the things that's in those updates is the onboard diagnostics firmware. So stay tuned for that, and that'll give you all that information you need. And like I said, you can also do this through iDRAC as well. So other than that, there's not really much to say about these tests. You just kind of let it run, and this can, this can take a while. It can take, you know, maybe a low end of 20 minutes up to maybe even an hour, especially if you have more memory in your system. Um, it's going to take a while to test all of that. Um, the more drives you have, that might add some time to it. So it really just depends on your system's configuration. But we're going to go ahead and fast forward through this. Like I said, pretty straightforward. Um, if it has any issues, it'll show you that that test failed. Uh, but if it has a check next to the test, like it does on the left-hand side for all of our items here, then that means the test was successful and there's no need to worry about it. So like I said, we're just going to go ahead and fast forward. All right, so we have finally reached the end of our test. And at the end of the test, we can go to the results tab that's in the middle of the screen, and we can go ahead and scroll through all the different messages. You can also view the event log, so that's pretty helpful. But if you go to the results, you can see a more in-depth information about the test that you just ran. So there's something very specific. It's a great place to look. But overall, that's Dell Diagnostics. Pretty easy, pretty straightforward. Uh, it's easy to access. Like I said, you may have that one issue where you may have to update the onboard diagnostics firmware. Uh, but other than that, once you do that, you shouldn't have any issues. All you got to do is navigate to the hardware diagnostics and just let the test run. You can let these run and then just go off, do something else, and come back 10, 20 minutes later. Um, and it's a pretty easy way to, one, test all of the drives in your system and make sure they're properly functioning but it's also a great way to test all of the other components in your system. So now I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys HD Sentinel. Alrighty guys, so I have HD Sentinel pulled up right now and as you can see, we currently have two drives plugged in. Uh, we have this installed into a storage array where we like to plug in multiple drives at a time so we can test those drives. HD Sentinel is an awesome tool because you can see things like the power on hours, which is great, especially when you're buying used equipment. You can see how long that, that drive has been in use. You don't want to be using drives that have been you know, heavily used because then you have a higher risk of drive failure. Um, and that's one of the reasons why HD Sentinel is such a cool tool but as you can see we can just go ahead and plug a drive into the array and it'll automatically populate within the software and like I said lots of information it'll give you health scores of the drives as you can see the two we have up top they have a hundred percent health score while the one at the bottom has a 99 percent so all pretty good so I hope you guys found this video useful, and if you did, go ahead, smash the subscribe, and leave a like. If you're interested in purchasing a custom-built server, or you're looking to buy some drives, we do have plenty of those in stock, so you can go reach out to us at sales at cloudninjas.com. Sales at cloudninjas.com. Anyways, guys, thank you for stopping by.